Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be making another restoration video. I'm going to be taking this ancient Roman coin that was minted almost 2,000 years ago and used by everyday ancient peoples and cleaning and restoring it back into a condition where I can A, identify it, B, it can be preserved, and C, it can be appreciated for the piece of history that it is. Hopefully we can all learn something in the process. It's been sitting under the ground for so long and finally today, together, we get to uncover the layers and figure out what's under there, who's under there, which city was the mint in which it was made, and where did it circulate, where did it travel, all these things we can learn. Before we hop in, let me just show you a little bit about this piece that we're going to be preserving today. This is, first of all, a unusually large coin for at least what I get my hands on. Now, as you can see, this coin is pretty consistently covered in a pretty thick deposit. First, starting on the obverse, I can see already that there's a bit of a bust peeking through, and you can even see where there's a legend that might be intact. I hope we can read exactly which emperor is on this coin. Now, you can see here, I think that's a bit of a mouth. I think the nose might extend up here, and it looks like this is a jawline. And then on the reverse here, I can't really tell what's under there. I do see a little bit of a legend here, so that's good news because it looks like the legends on this coin are at least mostly intact. So enough talking, let's actually start scraping some dirt off. All right, so based on the composition of this dirt, I think there's gonna be three steps here. First, I'm gonna start now with a kind of broader scraping tool. It has a flat edge that's pretty large in surface area, and then it also has kind of a point. It's really good at just kind of taking off a lot of dirt at once, which is fine because there's not as much danger of actually damaging the patina at this stage. Basically, I'm working my way around the edges. I'm just gonna to try to get a sense of what the rest of the coin is going to be like by kind of testing how it is under there. And I can already see that this coin is in really good condition just based on the kind of beading on the edge of the actual die. I'm pretty excited because it looks like this is a really good strike, which means that most of the die is actually visible. Some coins only have part of an image because the actual piece of metal would not always be placed perfectly in the center. But I can see there's a lot of beading here, which is a good sign that most of the die and most of the design is going to be here. And we're seeing some really cool details coming through, including what looks like the legend. You can actually see, you know, letters, <laughs> words being spelled out. We'll take a look at that as I uncover more. see the head and yeah we got a pretty full legend and a really great strike so I'm gonna keep going here and here you can actually see the hair and I'm uncovering part of a, a laurel wreath and the emperors were usually depicted wearing a wreath or a diadem which is kind of like a, a jeweled headband so I'm just gonna be really careful here because this is actually the band or the branch of a, of a wreath I think um, but I am being very careful there's a lot of dirt just caked in these details. I 
Again, I'm just going for the huge deposits. Like I'm trying to just get off the top layer so I can see what I'm dealing with before I go in to clean up all the small details and try to get that shiny patina. start seeing the face now, kind of the shape of the nose and the chin, and it looks like he's probably bearded, whoever this guy is. Alright, there's a nice outline of the nose with the nostril, we're starting to see some of the eye, and the eyebrow, and even the hair some deposits away from the letters so I can get a better idea of who this is. I think I have a pretty good idea. I'm not focusing on any one place for too long. I'm just trying to kind of do broad strokes here. But already, look at this. You can really get most of the details of the coin already. Everyone has their own threshold and ideas about how much dirt you should remove. You know, some people like to keep it because it actually can give the coin more contrast in the details. But for me, in this coin, it's in such a good condition that I think I can really get the patina to shine once I like put some wax on there, shine it up. And now I'm doing the reverse. I'm just going around the edges again. Start from the outside and then work my way in, basically. seeing also on this side there's a great strike with some beading going for the broad strokes there's just so much dirt <laughs> it's it's really crazy it's a curse for me in a way because I have to remove it all but it's a blessing because it's actually preserved the surface of the coin very well. So here I'm starting kind of my second pass with a needle. And now I'm actually removing more layers of dirt. I'm getting almost down to the patina. I am removing all the dirt in some places on the details. I'm just getting a little bit more detail oriented now. It looks like we have the figure of a man, probably the emperor or a god, and he has a cloak. It's super crazy, the fact that we are literally uncovering right now something that no one has seen since it was buried in the ground. And you guys are here with me as I do it. Let me know in the comments if you like these kinds of videos. I mean, it's so fun to do these. I want to improve these videos. I want them to be as satisfying as they can be. So I'm open to suggestions. So I've had a lot of success 
just uncovering the major details, and here you can kind of plainly see the figure of a large Roman god, probably Jupiter. He's facing left and holding who appears to be another small Roman deity. So we almost have a secondary character in this piece of art here. I love this tiny detail, and it really speaks to the fact that Roman mythology and the Roman state were completely intertwined. Now, in Roman mythology, Jupiter was the god of the sky, responsible for thunderbolts, and also the king of all the gods. With this picture, the emperor is telling all of his subjects, everyone who comes in contact and sees this coin, that he is favored by Jupiter, thus he is worthy of being emperor. just going to start getting detailed now on the obverse legend and the border of the engraving. Just working my way up the emperor's neck here, bit by bit, just scraping away these deposits. And what's underneath so far is looking like a completely intact patina with a really great dark green color. Gonna get a little bit more detailed on the back of the neck where the diadem ties are. Just going in for details on the forehead and the face. One interesting thing is there's like an actual gash in the metal of the coin, and it's right on its face, right on its cheek. You'll see it in a moment here. Wow, so we're actually seeing that this coin is preserved to such a state that you can actually see the hair. Each individual hair on the engraving here has been preserved. And as I get into step three, I'm expecting that I'll be able to actually get a lot more detail out of that hair. This dirt is coming right off. It's actually leaving behind a very consistent surface. This is gonna polish up very nicely. We're uncovering what looks to be the name of Constantine the First. Could be one of his relatives, though. We'll do more research on that in a little bit. And it looks like, yep, the whole legend is preserved. 
So, Constantine the First, also known as Constantine the Great, is an extremely interesting historical figure, and I'll just tell you kind of the highlights. Constantine ruled from 306 to 337 AD, and he's noted in history for several huge reasons, the first of which being that he was the first Roman emperor to actually throw aside the Roman pagan gods and convert to Christianity. This marks a huge turning point in Roman history and laid the foundation for the next 1,000 years of the Roman Empire. The second reason that Constantine the Great goes down in history is because he founded the city of Constantinople, named after himself, in the former city of Byzantium. Constantinople would continue on to be the center of Roman power in the east, and later would carry the Roman Empire into the Middle Ages as the capital of the late Roman Empire, also known as the Byzantine Empire. You may have noticed that at this point I'm using a new tool. It's an ultra-fine diamond-tipped needle that is really good at removing the last layers of dirt that's caked into all the small details of this coin. Now this is the most important step because this is where I have to be super careful that I'm only removing dirt and not actually scratching into the patina of the coin itself. But so far you can see that dirt is still coming off. That's a good sign. Now, I'm basically done with the dirt removal, and there's still a lot of just loose debris coating the surface of the coin, so I'm going to give it a proper rinse and a scrub with a light brush to remove all that loose sediment, and then I'm going to give it a coat of Renaissance wax. Now this wax is used as a preservative and also an aesthetic touch. I coat the surface of the coin, let the wax dry a bit, and then buff it out. I buffed it out for quite a while, and the results were stunning. Check this out. Not only does this wax polish preserve the coin, but it gives the surface a beautiful shine that really pops the details under good lighting. I'm so happy with this cleanup. Almost the full detail is visible. And though there are a lot of problems with the edges and some corrosion, even the corroded parts have a patina on them. So it ends up still looking really nice on the eyes. Attributing this coin wasn't difficult. I can make out the mint mark at the bottom, which appears to be a dot T dot s dot e and then a dot and using the mint mark and the legends that i could read i was easily able to identify which coin this is and find a few similar examples so starting on the obverse of the coin this is indeed a fullest coin of constantine the first and it was minted somewhere from 312 to 313 a.d the emperor is depicted facing right draped and cuirassed with a laurel wreath atop his head the engraving style is really something. The artist who made it gave the emperor a lot of character, departing from a photorealistic depiction. It seems pretty consistent of the styles of the Roman coins minted in Greece. On the reverse, we have a large depiction of Jupiter, standing left, holding victory who sits upon a globe. There's also an eagle holding a wreath in its beak, signifying victory, in the field to the left of Jupiter. Below Jupiter is the mint mark, dot ts dot e dot signifies that this coin was struck at thessalonica today it's the city of thessaloniki in modern greece but in roman times the city served as the capital of the roman province of macedon before that though the city was founded around 315 bc by king cassander of macedon 
It was named after his wife, who was a half-sister of Alexander the Great. And in 148 BC, after the fall of the kingdom of Macedonia, Thessalonica came under Roman rule. The city would grow to become an important trade hub, linking the east and the west, and also was one of the main early centers of Christianity. It was also home to a very prolific mint. And now, I can hold a piece of that history in my hands. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the journey of uncovering this small piece of history. And I hope you learned something. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a comment, subscribe, hit the like button, all that stuff. It helps support the channel. I really want to make more of these videos in the future and would love to hear your feedback. I always love to hear what I'm doing right and wrong. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.